claim it. They had one command, and that they were the craziest drivers we had. We had been observing them for a long time, and we didn't have no drivers crazier than them. And their objective was when it broke out, was to put the me uh, the metal, the pedal to the metal. Hit the sidewalk like you on the Santa Monica or the San Bernardino freeway. Bang! Rip through the crowd. Make a left turn, make a right turn. If you miss anything, put it, throw it in reverse and put the metal to the pedal, the pedal to the metal, and back up over the crowd. And while they're cleaning this sidewalk, somebody else is going to be cleaning that sidewalk. And we knew we had each squad prepared. We came in at all different points of the courthouse. <coughs> they looked up and saw us coming in the front, and they got prepared, and they, somebody said, this shirt, like, hurry my hurt. They looked behind, we were coming from behind. We had the left flank cover, the right flank cover, from before them and behind them. And then we had the vans, the trucks, and the jeeps. We didn't figure they had made an AK-47 or an Uzi that would stop these mad brothers that would go rip through them crowds and sweep the sidewalk. They call them, them weapons street sweepers. We had the real street sweepers with us. And we had our instructions on how to get the hell out of the way when the trucks were coming through, when the vans were coming through. And when the crackers started scattered in the street, we had another group of street sweepers that were supposed to take all lanes in the street like a parade and just drive straight through the crowd down the middle of the street. You see, we're looking for black men who are willing to fight this pecker war. We went to a funeral yesterday, and I almost stood there as tough as we were looking. We had on our black uniforms with our ber black berets on and our spit shine jump battalion combat boots, paratrooper boots. I mean, we were cold to the bone. They had on red, we had on black. It was a funeral of one of the of one of the bloods who had been killed. Some time back, we had been to a funeral of one of the Crips who had been killed. Because the Crip is our brother and the blood is our brother. We are all family. We are all family. Same dog that bit you, bit us too. So we go to both of the funerals because we're trying to win both of our brothers. Yes, we are. Yesterday was the blood funeral. And they came in, I mean, they were some tough brothers. They had big ones. Biggest mountains. Medium size. Then they had some little peewee brothers, look like they about this tall. Red and white, I mean, red plaid shirts on, button up to the top and the cuffs all red. We went to the crypt funeral, they were dressed the same way with blue on. Both of them, I mean, armies. That if we ever organize them, and we are. This white man is in trouble. He's in trouble when we are there. He's in trouble. They had some little brothers this tall. Look like they could take a bite out of a tree trunk. <laughs> like biting an apple. Spit the bark out. <laughs> they came in this tall with their red on, their red plaid shirts. Red starch and iron handkerchief hanging, look like a foot out of their back pocket. Some of them came in with a red bandana over their mouth and another red bandana over their face with just their eyes out and another red bandana on their head. <laughs> and they came down the sidewalk like an army. <laughs> I'm telling you, they look awesome. When we went to the crypt funeral, they came with their blue. They were awesome. They say that once Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, when they were fighting one of the great wars for Islam, for freedom, justice, and equality, it said that the enemy of the Quraysh, or the enemy, the, the other enemy uh, forces, sent spies in among Muhammad and his followers. And it says that they took back reports. This is 1,400 years ago in the desert of Arabia. They asked him, what is the report? What did you see when you went among Muhammad's followers? He said, we saw men with death in their eyes. 
and it looked like death riding on camelbacks. That's a hell of a message to take back to your commander, huh? That that's what you got to face. We saw men with death in their eyes, and it looked like death riding on camelbacks. When we went to the crypt funeral, we saw men with death in their eyes. It looked like death stomping on the pavement. When we went to the blood's funeral, uh, and then the crypt funeral went to the blood's funeral, we saw men and young boys with death in their eyes that looked like death walking on the pavement. I say, my God, look at this. They had the utmost love and respect for us. One of the leaders said, we're so happy that you, I mean, we went in force like this. We took the sister captain with us. We took her sister lieutenants with us, sister Captain Allen, sister Lieutenant Lorelei, sister Lieutenant um, uh, Priscilla, sister, with other sister lieutenant had to go and be on post at another assignment for Kwanzaa. And we took some of the other sisters with us. Sister Devlin and some of the others were there. What sisters were there? Hold your hands up. There's a sister. What's your name, sister? Huh? Anna. Sister Anna was there. And we took the sisters in because they got blood sisters and crip sisters too. But I stood there. I almost cried. It wasn't the funeral that made me sad because I've been to many funerals. But it was the fact that I looked at the church and there was red everywhere. The young brothers, they had a red, some of them t-shirts, red sweatshirts. The preacher was so scared of them until he had on a black suit with a red, big red, long handkerchief hanging out and a red tie. And he didn't want them to make no mistake. Is this snap? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Probably one of his best suits was a blue suit, but he didn't wear it yesterday. He wore red handkerchief. Their mothers, who obviously were not blood, but their mothers wore red hats. Their women, who were close to them, they wore dresses with black and red. That was red all over the place. And I almost broke, I mean, I almost just broke down and cried. We stood on posts and we stood along the wall. The brother said how happy he was for us to be there. He said, we're glad to see the brothers here. And one of the leaders of the outside said, no one has ever shown this kind of love for us. That we are so thankful that you came. And one of the leaders who stood up at the church during the eulogy, he said, so we're happy to see you, brothers. And we greet you the only way I know how to greet the brothers. Assalamu alaikum. And the church went up in smoke. Well, alaikum salam, sir. This is at the blood funeral. The whole choir stand filled with red. All around the place, red everywhere. I said, oh, Allah. I said, look at our people. I said, here we are, separated by territory separated by red and blue. And we had been to the blue funeral, and now we're at the red funeral. And we could only know and believe that soon there would be another funeral on the blue side, because they were saying that it was the blue side that had killed the brother that was in the casket. So we would be going back and forth from blue to red, blue to red funerals, killing the best of our young men, seeing them Die. So the minister will be back February the 2nd at the Los Angeles Sports Arena, 16,000 strong. February the 2nd at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Stop the killing, part two. Stop the killing, part two. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan at the Los Angeles Sports Arena, February the 2nd. What's the date? Where? At the Sports Arena where they had the Olympics. But I stood looking at all of the red. I said, oh, Allah, will we ever get them together? Can you imagine how hard it will be to unite them? Because when you try to unite them, they got to remember that their brother got killed, their blood brother. They got to remember how one of their uncle or their aunt or their, one of their other relatives got killed. Their mother might have got killed in a drive-by, grandmother. That's hard to forgive and forget that in the name